Hello everyone, in this video we are going to model a sci-fi panel using random flow. As you can see, I've already put in additional edge loops to create variations in the randomized result. This video will reiterate the importance of layering the randomized effects to get a really convincing result from your design. Our main task in this video is to stack or layer the randomized effects on top of each other so you can no longer tell whether the mesh is generated using Grebel functions. You can see that the face selection pattern and their sizes affects the results of the randomized mesh just like in the first video. This is true for all the operators. Play with the shapes until you get the one that makes sense to the general design that you have in mind. Remember that these operations are random but things like the face selection pattern can offer us a bit of a control on the output. The random extrude operator is great for creating angular noise to the design but the resulting shapes can sometimes need more work in order to increase its believability. This is where stacking the random meshes gets to work on that. When working on a particular design, you can choose to use a static value for all the random panel's thickness and depth so all cut details have a uniform look. Here, I change the face selection pattern to create another randomized effect on a particular area. By the way, the randomized operators are using a particular menu in Blender that operates directly if you change any of the parameters. This can be brought back using the F9 hotkey if it disappears while navigating the viewport. The menu behavior is Blender internal and cannot be changed using front-end codes utilized by the add-on. You can however, change the F9 key map in the user preferences to another hotkey, that's more convenient for you to use. In this part, I use the random panel's height to push it upwards and overlap parts of the randomized meshes above. This is another method of stacking or layering instead of just using surface level greebling. You can see that even with such minimal effort we have already pushed the believability of the random extrude results. In this video, I will not be using limited dissolve in random panels but instead use it manually using the X hotkey in situations where I need to. Use the quad slice operator to make short work of angular engons for quadifying them and making sure the subdivision works when we use the random operators. You can see that I'm not only stacking the random effects on higher surface levels but also on the lower ones. The peaks and valleys are also important areas for hard surface modeling not just for sculpting. Look for the shapes that pleases your eye as a designer. When in doubt go back to seed value number 1 and start again. To make multiple face selections easier, you can use hotkeys like C to activate circle select. Remember that face selection sizes affects the randomized results. This also dictates the way the mesh subdivides so be careful of really tight areas.
the panel amount parameter is slated for the next update of the add-on. As you can see, I'm not using this at all because at this moment this is not in the store version. Be sure to leave out rest areas on your model for the viewer's eyes to relax. The way you distribute your details in the design is also very important. Here, you can see that using the smaller sized face selection, the result of random extrude is not matching the bigger shapes that I want relative to the overall design. To remedy this, I'll use limited dissolve to get rid of the subdivision and use quad size to quadify the Engon face generated. Now these faces are big enough to generate the result that I want. Now, let's move on to the other areas of the source mesh. For random panels, use the layering method to create smaller and smaller details by using the operator on the previous paneling results. Again, using limited dissolve is entirely your choice and you can leave the subdivision alone. This just means that you have to use lower subdivision, if none at all, using the random operators because the faces are already subdivided. Don't forget to modify the design manually in edit mode if needed. 
This will increase the power of the plugin by combining it with your own Blender know-how and skills. The tubes are also individual instances or cells. And despite being a curve object, you can select entire instances by hovering over a segment and using the L hotkey. You can use this to remove tube details you don't want or edit them. Because the randomized meshes are also individual objects added to the scene, if you don't want a particular detail, you can just select that object and delete it. Now, let's go back to the more relaxed areas of the mesh. The rest areas doesn't need to be completely empty of details, you can also have minimal details added to them relative to their surroundings. Also, you can separate faces to use as a proxy mesh for the random operators if modifying their topology is too much of a hassle in their original state. you can then choose to get rid of that proxy mesh afterwards. This method can also be used if the available geometry in a particular area cannot provide you with the right faces to use for the random operators. If you're not sure of the topology of the faces you have selected when covered by other objects, use the Shift plus H hotkey in object mode to hide everything else besides the selected object. You can then use the Alt plus H hotkey to show them afterwards.
and this is our final result, you can see that stacking or layering the randomized meshes really creates a more convincing design. People will have a hard time figuring out that you actually used a mesh randomizer slash Krebola to come up with the design. You can even bake all these details into a plane by combining all the meshes together using the control plus J hotkey. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, use the comment sections or links in the documentation and the description of the video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.